Today is June 2nd. Um, this morning we woke up, we were surrounded, uh, it was cloudy, we were surrounded by squalls. We were getting rained on, off and on. The wind was picking up, so we took down the big jib, put up the working jib, and now we're running in, oh, I have no idea how much wind we've got. We've got about a eh, five foot swell with uh, two or three foot wind waves, white caps. We're doing, uh, according to the GPS, we're doing uh, six knots. We're gusting up to eight knots and down to five knots occasionally on a heading of uh, almost north. We got a northwesterly breeze here, so we're beating into it. But we got to go north. So the sun's out now, it's warming up. Not that it was all that cold, but uh, the sun's out, the wind's blowing, we're moving right along. It's a good day. We don't want to beat our brains out, literally beating into this, trying to get north. And he keeps wanting to blow us south or west. So, we decided to heave to and just rest and wait. So hey Laura, how's it going? Pretty good. Yeah. Enjoying the sail today? Beautiful day. Much Very better than yesterday, yesterday huh? <laughs> yesterday. Well, I hate to say that it sucked because it actually it was pretty cool in its own way, but it was not nearly as nice as it is today. Yeah. What's our course? Uh, three thirty, roughly. It would take five or ten depending on if a wave knocks us around. Yeah. Bit. What do you think our speed is right now? Uh, I think we're probably doing just under four knots. I think. Four knots? Yeah, about four. You know, can win no races like that. I'll have to check the GPS and see if I'm getting good at guessing. Uh, yesterday at dawn, we had a pretty good sea running from two directions. We had a south swell coming through, and we also had the northeast swell and the wind waves. Um, what was probably a, eh, wasn't blowing that hard. I guess 20, 25 maybe. Hard to tell. I don't have an anemometer, so anemometer, anemometer. I don't have a wind gauge instrument. So um, we fought it all day. Didn't really make any progress towards our destination. Uh, reduced sail, reduced sail. We started off with the big jib, went to the working jib, and in the end, we finally decided that. Rather than, you know, beat ourselves on the boat, we just heave to and wait till morning and see what happens. So we put up our smallest jib, hove to, turned on our anchor light. That's the all-around white light at the top of the mast. And, um, you know, went down in the cabin where it was fairly peaceful and quiet and uh, not too bad of motion and got into dry clothes and made ourselves comfortable. Um, of course, it's always prudent at night to keep some sort of watch, and we poked our head out periodically to scan the horizon. We still haven't seen a single vessel, or anything, or airplane even, uh, since uh, uh, clearing Kauai on our third day out. So we haven't seen anything since then, since Kauai. In the morning, uh, we checked our position, and we lost 
um, a couple of minutes of, of uh, northing, drifted south a little bit. Uh, but the conditions were much improved, so it's, it's a much nicer day. The sea is much much kinder. We have a much kinder sea state today. The wind is still northeasterly, um, and uh, but it's down to about uh, between 15 and 20. So once again, we're beating under working jib alone. Our course is nearly due north. And uh, making progress towards our destination at approximately five knots. First main log, June 4th, day 10, 6.30 a.m. Another great sunrise. We're still on a heading of 0 to 30 degrees. The swells are 3 to 5 feet coming on the front quarter. Generally, Lea Lea is riding well with only an occasional lurch or roll. Bree came to sit on my lap this morning on the top step of the companionway and watch the sun come up. She is now curled on her new favorite spot on the spare mainsail up forward. I've just finished a solitary breakfast of cold leftover beans. Still on watch as Chuck is again lying prone on the floor. Man, this is getting old. the video camera in its waterproof case today. The spray is constantly in the air now and everything is starting to feel damp. Tolerable only if it continues to be nice during the day so we can dry things out. So far it's been a beautiful morning. The temperature in the cabin is 75 degrees and there is a brisk slap in the air and the barometer is rising. Well, here it is day 10, June 4th, 2007. We had a great day yesterday. Uh, our noon to 6 a.m. run was uh, about 70 miles towards our next waypoint, even though we weren't heading directly for it. Uh, we were a little off, but we made a, a good 70 miles progress during those 18 hours, and when I take the noon site today, I'm sure we'll see a very nice run. Um, the wind has dropped down a little bit, the barometer is rising, the weather is overcast, um, comfortably cool, and uh, the boat's been steering herself now for, well, since noon yesterday, so uh, 19 hours, 20 hours. Last night, for some strange reason, my old friend Mal de Mer came back to visit me. I got seasick again. Had a miserable night. This thing just won't go away. Although I have periods when I feel really great, like right now. I spent an awful lot of time curled up on the floor <laughs> of the main cabin with a bucket close by. Last night we ran into, uh, we ran into, we almost ran into a fishing boat. Uh, we sighted three fishing boats, the first of which was uh, Maalea out of Honolulu, a long liner, and uh, we spoke to her, spoke to the captain. Um, I thought she was out of Florida. What's that? Florida. No, he was out of Honolulu. Was he? Yeah. Huh. We okay. thought he was saying Florida. When we first communicated, I thought he said that he was out of Florida also, but when we exchanged identification, he identified his boat as Maalea out of Honolulu, a long liner. And uh, so, Who'd have thought? All out of all this, we we're all tied down, flying with, uh, you know, sailing with the tiller lashed, on our course to our next waypoint, and right smack in front of us is a 60-foot or 70-foot fishing boat. I talked to the captain. He told me that he had gear out forward off the bow, so uh, we altered course and went around behind him, past the stern. Oh, maybe 500 yards off. Uh, not that far, 200 yards off. That was right at sunset. Uh, at uh, 1 a.m. this morning, we sighted a second fishing boat, and then again another one uh, a couple hours after that. So we sighted three fishing boats last night. Uh, the first one was the only one we talked to. Don't know what they're out here fishing for. Long lining. I don't know what they catch on long lines. 
didn't know there was anybody out here fishing. But those are the only people we've seen uh, in 10 days of sailing since we cleared uh, the Kauai Channel. Right now the weather is nice, the uh, wind is dropping, maybe we'll put the main up, see what we get, see what kind of results we get with that. We've been doing just fine with the jib only. Boat's been steering herself, keeping us on course and making good progress, but uh, wind's dropping and if we want to continue to make good progress we need to make more sail. This hat, you like this hat? Let me tell you about this hat. I like this hat too. It's a real salty hat. You know, you can you can make it all different kinds of shapes. You know, go down like a sou'wester. Really, really protects you from sun and salt spray and everything like that. And you want to look a little jaunty? You flip the brim up like that. It looks pretty cool. So it keeps out of your eyes and keeps the seagull droppings off your head. I got this hat at West Marine in um, 19. Oh, I got it for our honeymoon. I bought this hat for my honeymoon. And if you want to know about our honeymoon, that's another story altogether. Good morning, Laura. Good morning. How are you today? I'm doing great. Had a beautiful evening. Morning. Oh, it was a beautiful evening last night, too. Oh, last night was a beautiful <laughs> evening. Yeah, it was. We had a nice meal, too. We did. Beef stroganoff. Beef stroganoff and wine. Yeah. Oh, well, I had wine. I had some wine, too. Oh, you did? Yeah. I didn't even know it was sipping out of my <laughs> cup, huh? <laughs> I don't take much. It was a beautiful evening. We uh, lashed the tiller down again last night. And um, pretty much let it set all night. Went down below and I took turns sleeping. And uh, the person on watch stayed down below, but just came up and checked every once in a while. But it was very mellow last night. Not much for you know, just enough wind to keep us moving, but the water was pretty flat, so it was very comfortable and very cozy last night. Okay. Other than that, Doesn't look like it, but we're doing about four knots according to the GPS on rather flat seas. Just a little bit of wind, kind of gray, overcast skies all the way around. No sun out there anywhere. And as usual, absolutely nothing on the horizon. Saw a couple of glows last night below the horizon. Fishing unit, fishing, uh, fishing boats out there, they get all lit up. But we didn't actually see the boats or see their lights, we just saw them glow. One big ship yesterday, a tanker, way off on the horizon. Steaming south for Honolulu, as we were going north. And now we've had our breakfast and we're thinking about putting up the big jib. Make a little uh, more speed with this light wind. Mm. Today is June 5th, day 11. Um, had some interesting things this morning. We discovered our uh, the through deck connector for the solar panel wiring goes down and forward to the batteries. The through deck connector has uh, had gotten all corroded, and um, the wires uh, below the connector had uh, melted their insulation, and uh, the solar charging system was not working at all. Uh, pushed the little buttons on the solar panels and they, they didn't do anything so it indicated that the whole thing was fried. 
and I was worried about that. But once I disconnected the wires from the solar panels, the solar panels themselves are okay. So uh, all I have to do is rewire the solar panels to the batteries. Nothing to it if we were at the dock. It'll be a little more challenging out here, but we'll have to do that. Um, so we, uh, we fired up the engine, decided to run the engine for an hour uh, to charge the batteries up. Not, not that they were low, the batteries were fine, but uh, we had run our lights all night and run the stereo last night. So um, uh, started the engine up. The engine uh, ran for about 10 or 15 minutes and then started acting funny. Uh, it was a fuel supply issue, no big deal, but we did have to uh, open the cockpit sole and get to the fuel filter. Um, we had a little uh, squeeze bulb on the fuel hose uh, just for this reason, because we've had this problem before. So all, all it was needed was to reach down in there and uh, pump some fuel up into the filter, and then the engine ran fine for an hour and a half. And it topped off our batteries while we were doing that. We ran the water maker, topped off our ready-use uh, water tank. We're using about a gallon and a half a day. Um, we're not trying to conserve at all. The water maker, you know, run the water maker for an hour. Uh, it makes a gallon and a half of water. So you know, that, that isn't the problem. We also have plenty of water in reserve. We have about, I think, uh, like 35 gallons of water on board right now. So even if the water maker did quit, we would be in fine shape. No problem at all. But we're going to consider uh, carrying less water because you know, the water maker makes enough water. We do need a backup supply, of course. You don't want to get 10 days out at sea on a 20-day trip, have your water maker fail, and only have five gallons of water left. So uh, we'll, we'll be, we will be looking at that. But everything's going pretty well. Um, the seasickness thing that has been bothering me, it comes and goes, and still, even this morning, uh, a little bit when I was uh, with my head down in the locker trying to diagnose the electrical problem, I started getting a little, little, little dizzy, a little queasy. Uh, so I don't, know, I, don't, I don't know what's up with that. 11 days out of sea and I'm still getting seasick. That's kind of strange. But the weather has been beautiful the last couple of days. Yesterday it was overcast and nice and cool. Uh, today it's bright and sunny, but we're moving north. We're uh, somewhere in the vicinity of 30 north uh, latitude, and uh, so it's getting cooler. Uh, we're skirting the edge of the high, the North Pacific high. Our barometer has uh, risen quite a bit, so that tells us we're along the edge of the high. We don't want to go into it because we'll run out of wind altogether. Right now we're moving at about four knots, and we have been moving uh, four to six knots continuously for the last few days uh, since we had since that one day that we had to heave to and made no progress at all. Three days ago, well, three days ago, three days ago. Yeah, but uh, all day yesterday, all night last night, uh, all day the day before, and all morning this morning, we've been making pretty fair progress with just the working jib up. Uh, a nice, comfortable ride. just kind of cruising, you know, just cruising. You look nice and comfortable. My sunshade. Now my favorite snack for midday fruit and nuts. Fruit and nut medley. Fruit and nut medley. Mm -hmm. Dried fruit and nuts. And you've got your little awning rig here on the boom, I see. Looks nice and shady. Uh, adjustable. Goes, Goes over, over to the other side in the <laughs> afternoon, doesn't it? Yep. Yeah. So, took me a few days to get that one rigged, but it works pretty darn good. I don't know. We got another piece of canvas that's exactly the same. We could probably rig both yeah. sides at once if we wanted to. And we also found out that um, it acts as part way of a sail. We took it down the other night after we'd been running for, what, about six hours with the tiller lash. We took it down, screwed everything up. <laughs> So I had to readjust everything. So actually, I just left it up last night and seemed to work okay. But I uh, can't leave it up if it gets too breezy. But it be pretty good. We ran pretty much all night without touching the tiller again, didn't we? Yeah, we were set it up at 2:30 uh, yesterday afternoon and only 
we had to touch it uh, about nine o'clock this morning. Nine o'clock this morning, yeah, something like that. When the like wind that. started to out again. Yeah, the wind died down, yeah. as it does every morning, yeah. or it has the last few mornings anyway. It's been pretty much expected to die down. And uh, lashing a tiller like this keeps us on course. I mean, we haven't varied uh, more than 10 degrees off course, one way or the other. And um, after we finished running the motor, the tiller was still lashed, and uh, turned the motor off, and she just set her course again and kept sailing. So, easy cheesy. We have to get better coffee when we get to Seattle. June 6th, day 12. Very much like day 11 in terms of uh, sea conditions and weather right now. Wind is light, sea is moderate. Uh, we're proceeding on a course of 0 020 degrees. Uh, that's nearly north for those of you in Rio Linda. Uh, the weather has been uh, consistent, if nothing else. The winds drop off in the afternoon, pick up again around sundown, usually blow through the night until uh, late morning, and then drop off again. Yeah, but last night was strange. Last night was strange. It was a strange night. It was wet last night. It wasn't raining. It wasn't foggy, but it was, it was a mist, a sort of a dew that covered everything. Last night at uh, about 12 o'clock, the wind died completely. So Laura got me out of bed to take down the jib uh, because it was just banging and flogging and making a lot of noise and chafing and that's not good. So rather than do that, we took down the jib and just bobbed uh, out here for approximately six hours until the wind came back up again at about six in the morning, at which time Laura got me back up out of uh, bed. We've gone through one watch change. I spent my entire watch last night just sitting here bobbing around. And then when Laura went on watch, the wind came back up, so she got me out of bed to help her change the sail. I don't, she doesn't need my help, don't misunderstand. But we have a rule. At night, no one leaves the cockpit unless there's two people on deck. And always tethered. Always tethered at night. Always tethered on the foredeck. Rule number one, don't fall off the boat. We've participated in man overboard drills on boats with large crews, 50 people in the rigging pointing, there they are, there they are, and it is very sobering uh, how quickly you lose track to a human head sized object out there in the waves. So uh, stay on the boat, don't fall off, because if you fall off, you're lost. So therefore our rule, always tethered at night, always tethered on the foredeck, no one leaves the cockpit unless two people are on deck. Never go forward alone with someone down in the cabin. Also happened yesterday, oh, we saw another ship. Dang near ran into it again. You would think, with all this ocean, and we're just locked down on a course, we nearly ran into two ships out here. We didn't have to change course to avoid this one, but uh, just poking along, didn't seem to even notice that we were here, passed within a kilometer of us, uh, which is pretty dang close for a ship. Um, close enough for us to read the name on the side if her eyes were good enough. But uh, she was just headed off in a westerly direction, poking along about the same speed as us, you know, four or five knots. 
churning away. You could hear the machinery going from as close as we were. You could hear it chugging along. June 7th, day 13. Well, we've been making very little progress the last few days. 50, 60 miles a day towards our first waypoint out in the middle of the Blue Pacific at 40 north, 160 west. We're now at about 31 north, 161, to 161, 21, something like that, west. So uh, we're on course, more or less, but um, we're just not making much progress. The winds have been very light, mostly from the northeast or east. This morning, something new, though. Uh, we woke up to a uh, almost no wind again, but this time from the south. So we have uh, a south wind pushing us due north uh, under pulled out big jib. And of course, no more lashing the tiller under these conditions. We just have to steer it. Uh, but we had a very restful day and evening, you know, yesterday and uh, last night. There was absolutely no wind last night. Once again, we hove to for a few hours and just rested. Uh, woke up this morning, assessed the situation, made our sail change. Uh, had some confusion getting the pole up. First time we've done the pole up at sea. Uh, but all in all, it worked out pretty well. And now we're making about two, two and a half knots towards the north. Still have about 600 miles to go to our first waypoint. I'd like to be making more progress, but hey, we're cruising. First mate's log, June 7th, day 13. We had oatmeal with raisins and walnuts around 9 a.m. for breakfast. Hove to all night, and now we are just waiting for the winds to pick up again. Chuck has had to sleep with the sound of flogging sails again since 4 a.m. Had a great evening, though. After we hove to, I made some hot chocolate, and we buttoned up against the mist of doom, as we are now calling it, and shared a small bag of famous Amos cookies. We are currently crawling along in extremely light and variable winds, making barely one knot, but at least it's in the right direction. Today is uh, June, what, 8th? Day 13. Wind is still from the south. We're running due north. We got the full main up. We got the big jib pulled out, running wing and wing, making uh, better than four knots 
towards our destination or towards our waypoint actually right now. Um, so far, day 13 is going pretty much like day 12 and day 11, uh, except that we've got more sail up and the wind's coming from the south now, as it did yesterday. But um, the early part of our trip, we didn't make very much progress, uh, so we're a little bit behind schedule. Not that we really have a schedule, but we did want to get to uh, Lopez Island for the rendezvous on, uh, actually we wanted to arrive on June 28th. We may still make it, I don't know. Depends if we find some wind up here. But at least now we have favorable winds pushing us in the right direction at a reasonable speed. So, um, uh, you know, hope is out there. <laughs> it's actually a pretty good day. The wind is light but steady and uh, it's been steadily, uh, uh, it's been a steady south wind for two days now. No rain. At night it gets a little dewy, a little chilly and a little damp out here the last couple nights. Um, but it's okay. We're taking uh, three hour watches in the evening. And in the daytime, we have three, four hour watches set up, but we just kind of play it by ear. We both have things we want to get done, so take turns spelling each other on the tiller. Running like this, with the sail, sail configuration uh, like this, wing and wing, you can't lash the tiller. Just a, a moment's inattention and the boat wanders off course. So this requires hand steering or a working tiller pilot. Uh, since we don't have a working tiller pilot, we're hand steering until we get uh, wind forward of the beam and we can lash the tiller again. Looking forward to that, although it may not happen anytime soon. And Laura says we're going to have pancakes for breakfast this morning. We're going to have a late breakfast. We had some oatmeal earlier. But we're going to have a late breakfast probably. Oh, well, I guess it'll be lunch. Uh, position right now is uh, approximately 31 degrees north, 160 degrees west, and we're sailing up the longitude, sailing up the meridian. We're sailing up 160 to our waypoint at 40 north, or until we encounter westerly winds, whichever comes first. And that noise you hear in the background is our trusty water maker. Water. Without water, you die. So drink lots of water. And I'm glad Laura talked me into buying that water maker too. Because if we didn't have the water maker, we'd be thinking, gosh, this trip's taking a long time. I wonder if we're going to have enough water. Well, since we do have a water maker, and since we also still have about 30 gallons of water, uh, I think we'll be okay. So we're not stressing over the water situation. I think we may be running low on famous Amos chocolate chip cookies, however, and that could be a problem. That combined with the coffee. <laughs> bad, bad coffee. Fortunately, we're headed for Seattle, and I hear they have good coffee there. 